Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Koda Blow over here. And today we are heading to the deep heart of the community of Titusville. Uncovering stories, exploring hidden gems, and highlighting the amazing culture that makes this neighborhood unique. And also, I'm gonna show you some food spots so you could go check out as well when you go to Titusville. So let's jump right into the vlog. Wait, maybe not jump right into the vlog. Let me give you a little history of Titusville before we do that. Titusville was established in 1867 by Confederate Colonel Henry Theodore Titus. Originally named Sandpoint, it was renamed Titus in 1873 following a Domino's game. Can you believe that? The Domino's game is what changed the name and who owned the city of Titusville. The town rapidly saw rapid growth in the late 19th century thanks to its prime location on the Indian River Lagoon and a proximity to the East Coast Railway, becoming a hub for agriculture, fishing, and tourism. Meanwhile, police in Titusville are investigating a shooting that left one person seriously injured. Investigators say those shots were fired Friday night in a parking lot on North Singleton Avenue. Yeah, more Lisa, the shooting actually happened in the apartment complex right behind me in the parking lot. The shooting happened next to that white pickup truck. The bodies of the two victims are still here on the scene. One of them is located inside of that truck, and the other one is right beneath the truck. I want to take you to some video now from earlier this afternoon. This happened right off of Knox McRae and Mount Vernon at the Sandalwoods apartment complex just before 3 o'clock this afternoon. That's when police received multiple 911 calls from people who live here who heard multiple gunshots and then when officers arrive that's when they discovered the bodies again of those two people before we dive into today's vlog in titusville let's take a moment to check out some music from our host mozzie smoke make sure to like and subscribe to his channel as well and you know just stay tuned and make sure you guys leave a comment under for any place you want me to check out next so let's get this started who your daddy is oh my daddy ain't there i can't tell the niggas Go to yap and I compare it. What you go by? Man, I go by yellow carry. I got a bun, I fired up just like look here. Big go hit the tub, man. You acting like you hear you. I wouldn't marry you with rings or a cherry. When that look die, I give a flower just to bury it. Check me out, look, hey, don't be you so probably get that from your mama. I know what you gon' spend, hit your curtain, DJ drama. She always screaming, period. I ain't never seen a comma. I got goat turkey neck. I got wings, I got llama. Teach a seven to the offer. Cause I'm sharper than Obama. How you call yourself chicken? You ain't never got no money. Coochie free of that No, that shit don't hit on nothing. I couldn't not put on my Nikes, went to run it. I don't never buy food, but I'm always in the stomach. Mazi Smoke, we starting off right here at 618 Granite's where I came up at 2008 kind of time. Before my dog died, and once my dog died, we kind of moved. That was uh, November 5th, 2008 when my dog had first pass. My cousin stayed right here at 620. Johnny May, he was the one I used to do the music. He still do the music, but he used to record up there. And I started recording with him when I was like, probably like seven years old. You feel me? I used to have like, Probably like five, six songs on my space when I was a jitterbug. Like my shit was, I hope my whole family knew my shit. Like I've been, I've been on that rapping shit, but I stayed right here, this is my house. You feel me? And it ain't all sunshine and rainbows when I talk about this shit. Like we for real, when we stay here, we went without water for months, you feel me? And food was always on some crazy shit. And I don't say that to discredit nobody. It's just, that was the situation we was living. It wasn't then no good. I can't lie to you, that shit wasn't no good. But luckily we had our family next door, so shit, whenever we didn't have no water, they'll look out occasionally, you feel me? I remember they had a cable running from their house to my house just so we had cable, so, you feel me? It was love there, but with restrictions, you feel me? So have they changed the building since you lived in there, or has it still nah, been like same, that? Nah, it's the same, the okay. same, that's the same. They probably painted it, but that's the same. Holes all on the fence and shit. It was a whole right where his head would have been, right there on the fence. My dog K, he died right over there on the concrete. Dude. And it was blood there for months. Until we moved, it was still blood. They don't really kill as much as they used to. Now the youngest kill when 
when I was when I was a jit, that was the older. That was what them older niggas did. The jits weren't really killing each other like how they is now. So it's a lot different. I stayed that too right there. Uh, 2040 Palmetto Street. I stayed there with, with my mama friend. My mama caught a case in front of all of us. Me, my brother, my sister. And I don't say that discredit my mama at all. I love my mama to death. But man, she caught a case right here. She had came on some crazy shit and she beat him with a golf club like right there. Spanked him, you feel me? Next day, she got arrested in front of everybody. But shit, that's life. We ain't tripped by it, you feel me? We had to move with our grandma for like 30 days, but I don't really even. She's straight, you feel me? Seeing all this stuff going on, did you start getting immune to stuff like that as a young in a young age? Hell yeah. How did it affect you mentally, you know, growing up like that, you know, going, seeing certain things, you know, you're saying violence going on in the neighborhood. Did it change your perspective on how life was as a kid? Because, you know, as a kid, you, majority of the time, people, you know, as a kid, you think, you know, life is great, you know, life is amazing. Did it change for you as a young age? Did you already know what life really was at I, a young age seeing all this? I kind of, uh, I lowered my expectations from people, feel me, like, say, like, I don't expect nothing from nobody. We was piss poor. I remember it, like we was piss poor. It wasn't really shit. we. I don't know. We ain't really had. Shit. I don't really know. I, don't, I can't lie on. It definitely it fought with you, but it definitely give you tougher skin at the same time. Like it was, it was crazy. It definitely keep keep y'all what it is. That's my dog. Let him know how it is out here. Man, this city wicked, boy. Play your game right up. Get lost in this. That's just what it is. Right. What's the neighborhood mean to you? Yeah, yeah. no bad out, baby. This is where I raised that. Taking them straight to bad right now, you feel me? Like, for real. Let them know. Yeah. Ain't never going to change. Ain't never going to leave. That's why I was born and raised. And I'm going to die this way. Right. For sure. I mean that. Yes, sir. Yeah, still. Love, 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 I can't say it was all bad, though. Like I say, my dog stayed right there. They made it better. My little brother, Shuki, he, he stayed over there. Shuki died before he was like 11 years old. She could die at the hospital, you feel me? They say, I really can't, I don't want to speak on that because I don't want to say the wrong shit. But my brother died at the hospital, you feel me? He died in room seven after two hours, you feel me? I was born 11 to seven, so I know we locked in for real. Yeah, we used to be over here. There was a lady named Miss Jenna's house. We used to pull up to her, you feel me? Get frozen cuts and shit, nothing. Not too crazy. Money. Chilling. Uh, I see in the most part, you know, you know, people in the neighborhood has the neighborhood changed because a lot of neighborhoods that I've been through been gentrified a lot with new uh, residents, new people. And this neighborhood is the majority still the same people that you've seen growing up? Nah, uh, this neighborhood, like, it's, they rotating. You feel me? People rotate through here. You okay. feel me? You might got a few older people that stay, but like, for the most part, people rotate, you know, situations. I mean, people get moved around a lot. Nobody that, that lived over here, when I stayed over here, live over here no more. Not one person, I can't call that. These right here new, I ain't even seen these yet, you feel me? It's crazy, but when I stayed over here, they used to have like a, a tall ass abandoned, abandoned apartments over here, Brown Street Apartments. Do you like what they're doing to the neighborhood? Yeah, like buildings straight, like I this right lie. here? You know, any, anything positive really, really a blessing for the neighborhood, for real. What it is? Chilling, chilling, doing a little vlog. What's up? Talk to him. Say what's up to him, man. What's up? Let him know how tight his roll is, man. Tell him about you like living out here? Yeah, it just close, chilling. All right. See what's going on. I'm gonna lock in with you, brother. All right. Say that boy be easy now. Nah, this bad though. This bad though. My brother, my brother, a bad ass baby. See, I grew up in Uptown and Bad, so. This hey, man, I'll tell him about Man, come here, you can do that real bro, quick. You don't gotta play with him, bro. Talk to him. Talk to him, bro. Tidesville, you know what's going on. Been thugging out here uh, since the jet. Right. Trying to make it out, you know, with the rapper stuff. You know what's going on. Tidesville, East Side moving. Florida for real. Real you shit. Know, this us. Real Talk heavy. to him, bro. Yeah. Real shit. Hey, man, you got anything you can spit real quick? I don't got nothing right now. Nah? Right. Nah? <laughs> I don't got nothing. Hey, put, put me on the song though. Hey, hit my phone, I got you. All right, bet. 
It's getting, it's getting better though. We ain't even had no sidewalk right here, be for real. Oh, so they, they put the sidewalk right now? Yeah, yeah, I used to live on this corner right up here. And they call this bad, like this is the drive through. Feel me, junk is coming through this. Like nothing, you don't gotta have no phone. You don't gotta have no nothing. As long as you got what they need, yeah. they gonna pull up on the block and get that every time. I was probably like, this was 2006. I stayed here before I stayed over there. Has this always been empty like this over here? Nah, I remember I told you it was some taller uh, abandoned apartments. It was brown street oh, apartments. Oh, okay. But by the time I lived on the block right here, these was already abandoned. So like five years later, they broke these down. This was empty until like probably like two, three years ago. Uh, uh Sion, DJ stayed right there. But before they stayed right there, a little shit named Jesse lived right there. And I tell you, Jesse was the youngest hustler I ever met. He like six years old here in Kmart for TVs for his family. At six, five, six years old. Wow. Really doing that jit name Jesse. Really doing that shit. Young nigga, bro. So you think they knocked these apartments or the building you said right here? Because of the, what you were saying earlier, like, you know, they had a whole bunch of junkies coming through. Yeah, and, and like the, crime, the crime rate was crazy right here. But that was before my time, like, or, or oh, okay. the beginning of my time type shit. Oh, so you only seen it literally. When oh. it was abandoned type shit. Yeah, oh, yeah. okay. I stayed right here on the corner right here. You feel me? I grew up right here, 2006. This is a drive through I'm talking about coming from everything. The corner up there on Tropic, my auntie Audrey ran that shit. I ain't gonna say who else ran it with her, but yeah, they had that shit swinging for real. Really trap in the city. I stay right here, 510. 510. Right here. That's why I used to sit. I'm talking about 2006, Jitterbug, just sit right here on the block. Coming through every day, just swinging. Swang, swang. I was too young to get some Jabos, but boy, I wanted some. But I'm telling you, young just right here, chilling. Probably bag of chips, honey bun, little drink, just right here. I'm talking about they coming through. You know, all you gotta do is stand up and catch them. Feel me? They used to be out there deep. I'm talking about Matt, dude, uh, uh, free Corey. Corey used to be out here. Pool, other pool, man. I remember his name Ali. I only want to say his last name, but they know him. he was with somebody's daughter, bro. They came four deep. What the right here? I'm a legit peeking out the window. They smashing them, man. They ain't give him no mercy. You feel me? He told them his full name, who he can to. They weren't trying to hear that, bro. And, and if you know the story, you know the story. One of the most crazy thing you've seen that you can talk about out here? Um, I don't even know, really. I can't lie. Some shit you just don't know if it's if it's the timing for that. Yeah. For or sure. you just never know how sensitive that information is. Sure. What it is, chilling. You just. I couldn't. I couldn't really say. I couldn't really say, but. Down there, that's where my, my brother Shooky lived before he passed down there. Down this street over here? Yeah. That's where he, he down there growing up in the house right now. My dog Bacon stayed over here. We'll get down there though, but man, I knew everybody on the street, man. If you don't know everybody on the street, you ain't from really around. For the most part, I'm grateful I came from here though, to be for real. Cause like up until 2010, that's when I moved to the east. I've been in the east ever since. But like this, like this was like this what molded me into who I was. You feel me? Yeah. Um, Titusville is how big is it? Like you say, East Side. Like how long would it take for you to get to the East Side from over here? The East Side, Mims. Titusville, Titusville, Titusville. But the East Side is Mims. That's like that's the next town over. Okay. They separated. They like they kind of the same, but at the same time they they very different. Like Mims on some on some more like country. Shit, you feel me? That's what he's riding bikes at. Dirt roads, back roads, cuts. You feel me? That's what people want to hang, swing. Yeah. That's where the project's at. Like, so that's where Cooley stayed back in the day. This corner used to be swinging just like that one over there. So that's where Bacon used to live. Teflon the ticket. That was hell. I'm talking about from the day he was born to, to God rest his soul. That was hell every day. I'm talking about Teflon. Rest in peace, Teflon the ticket, dog. That was hell, dog. Hey, Auntie. Man. You said this house right here? Yeah, Teflon. Bacon, that is crazy as hell. 
chilling, chilling. My auntie Cece used to live right there before she passed. God rest her soul. Man, only thing you eat at that uh, peanut butter and jelly or, or some noodles. That's it. Or, or, or some that she got from Summerette. She used to work at Summerette for like 20 years. That's the only thing you eat. And, uh, that's all this is all one neighborhood? Or is it divided into like nah, different neighborhoods? We don't divide. No, not, not down here. Okay. Everybody down there together. If people divide it down here, it's, it's, it's personal differences. It ain't really, it ain't no hood down here. We all together. For sure. What's going on, man? That's the corner store, one star. I used to be at that bitch every day. I remember one time I went in, this, I went in that bitch seven times, saying they stole something every time. Last time I stole something, I got caught. Once we get down here, it's a little field. We used to play football in. It was me, Chevelle, TJ, Long Legit, Mario Clayton, um, Ralph Fett, Siron, Paul Green. Um, it used to be all of us, man. I'm talking about deep playing football. CJ Hawkins, he went to the lead though. He started off back here. He the only guy that with cleats on. I'm talking about Michael Vick cleats, just like 2000, 2007, 2008. Yeah. I'm talking about he already showing what he can do, you feel me? How serious is sports out here, like football in general? like. And this is Brevard County, right? That that's what that's what it's leaning on out here. Okay. That's that's the way. That's the way. We got Jordan Smith. He down about to go pro. He a uh, basketball player, Cario. He uh he down about to go pro. Both of them like sports is heavy. You feel me? Like if we got Sam Hawkins, he played for UCL. Shit. It's... Who's your rival out here, like high school wise, when it comes to um... astronaut at Titusville? Okay. They rivals, but. It ain't never no rivalry. One of them always better than the other one. It ain't never no. Oh, so it's never years. like that. That one school is better than. Nah. Every school, it's always like a balance. It's a balance. Oh, okay. One team will have it for like three, four years, and then the tide will switch. The other team will have it for three, four years, and the tide will switch. It ain't never no heavy balance. If I had to calculate the numbers on the rivalry, one team probably up by two wins. So like. And this is like over 30, 40 years plus. I'm talking about 50 years. 50 year plus yeah. rivalry. Wow. Yeah. Hell yeah, we both in the same town. North Titusville, South Titusville. It ain't really no North and South, but that's how they divide it between the schools, you know? Yeah. I used to live over here when I was a small kid. I can't even remember how old I was. Probably like three. I stayed over there. This the field we really played in, though. This, this the field. This the field right here. Carpenter Homes, this is my dog, Siron, used to live. From the day I met him to today, we still got the same bond, like locked in. Like, that's really, that's one of my people's for real. Yeah. Then we got the White Park down here. I'm talking about the White Park, legendary. That's why I then there met my dog, Zay Gamble. He stayed down here on the right. His mama was undefeated in Madden for like 15 years, man. Nobody could beat her. Feel yeah, me? That's Miss Iris, man. She was a beast, man. I'm talking about, and that Madden, she ain't come to lose. Me and Zay Gamble was locked down, I'm talking about, since from like 2009, like 2019, like 10 years straight, locked in. You feel me? And then you get older after a while, you feel me? And the separation always. This tree, I remember the first time I came to this tree, I then it was like, probably like three years old. That's, that's done it all for Titusville. 2008, 110508, when my boy had died. It was just, it was hectic down here. Once he died, yeah, we, it wasn't no longer than a year, but then we moved to the Eastern. We ain't came back to the city since, for real. So around what year do you think it started calming down out here? Like when, you know, you saw speaking about when you was growing up, it was, you know, very active with the older folks. Now it's more the younger folks. When did the, the balance change? Uh, 2015. 2015, between 2013 and 2015, it switched from being like the older people doing the killing to the younger people doing the killing. It like switched, you feel me? What would be one thing you would like for the um, community to have or change, if they could change um, I feel like we should have more programs for kids, like um, tutoring, um, aftercare programs, uh, like a year-round sports program. Really, some of anything, anything to keep the kids active and not like, you know, you give them too much time to think sometimes, they, they think of the shit they ain't supposed to be thinking of. You keep them on track, then ain't no way they can go, you feel me? So. I feel like we gotta get the kids more, we gotta get their attention more and focus their attention on them.
I feel like once you like, you isolate them too much, you know, they become like what they call introverts or whatever. Like ain't nothing wrong with an introvert, but if you don't speak, they don't know. So I feel like we gotta stay active with the kids and keep the community right. But besides that, everything good. We don't really have too much bad on it. You feel like they uh, depict this area differently on the news than what it is in real life? That's just the news itself though. Um, I really don't watch the news, so I couldn't tell you how the area is depicted for real. But I know it's, it's I mean, we've been good since I've been out here. Are you feel me? Everybody I seen, what? Good energy, good people. They just want to be heard just like me, you feel me? So. I feel like as long as we can really like, we can get a we can get an eye on them voices and bring good attention to the city, we be good. Is there I any like, uh, small businesses out here that you like to shout out or you would like the people to know about? My sister, she in a uh, beauty salon, not doing how. I don't know the name of her location. Um, myself, my brand, Yellow Care, baby. Let me get that real quick. There you go. Yeah. I'll be in stores real soon. Already online, but um. Everyone that we got, we got, we got so many girls cooking. We got, we got uh, Tanya Brown. She making the sweets. Uh, uh, Golden. She making the plates. We got KB Band making the plates. So we got everybody who doing their thing. We got Humble Hustler making clothes. Um, everybody, you feel me? If I know you and you doing your thing, I swear to God, I support you because it's not easy. Being an entrepreneur, Brad, more days. You want to take more days off than you want to work because you feel me, you got that freedom to do that, but you can't. I be realizing, you know, once you stop the, once you stop the wheel from going, you're really stopping your emotion. And that consistency is a lot. Without consistency, you're really just falling out the loop. And I don't fell out the loop plenty of times due to like, you know, not being consistent. So I like, say consistency is a big thing. You know, you, you talk about consistency, like living in this neighborhood and areas like this, do you think was it a little harder for you to get that mindset? You felt like you're like, not, not so per se like the chosen one, but you know, a lot of people end up, you know, like you said, they end up doing their own thing because they've like introverts don't have a lot of things to be doing out here. Do you feel like growing up over here was a little harder for you to, you know, get that mindset of becoming an entrepreneur? Hell yeah. I had to separate myself to get a mindset. I ain't always had this. I was... I was living in rage for a long time. Like I was, like I told you, after all these situations, when you say how that affect me mentally, I was living in rage for years. Like that rage just ended in me probably like six years ago. But like, I was living in rage because like every time I bring up a memory, it's down there negative. And I sat down and talked to somebody one day and expressed like how I felt about my, you feel me, my past and shit. And they was like, maybe I directed too much energy towards the negative instead of the positive. So that way I only remember the negative and not the positive. So it's all about how you think of it. I feel like everybody gonna have a spark one day. Your spark might not come when you 15, it might not come when you 20, might not come when you 25. But when that spark hit, it changes your whole reality in a matter of seconds. It's crazy. Like I'm to a point that like any great information or good information I'm giving, the moment I'm giving that information, it instantly reflects on my life. Like, you know better, you do better. You can't, you can't ignore good information if it's gonna better you. You feel me? So, I really feel like it's all about how you, how you look at things and how you put it into perspective. It can really, it can be positive or negative depending on how you look at it. But I tell you what it is, it is, it really depends on how you, how you really do it for real. If you can give advice to somebody that a youth that's probably. Like you said, um, you had rage growing up. That probably going through the same thing that you went through. What would you tell them? If you're going through that rage, I feel like it start with isolation. Once you isolate, then change your perspective. See, like, like I could easily banish the people that like raised me based on my living situations. Cause like I told you, I don't went without wood. I don't went without food. I don't went without clothes. I'm talking about for years. I was a hand me down kid. Like only thing I ever had was hand me down. First time I really got some new. I probably was like 16, so you gotta think about it. I've been wearing used clothes my whole life. I'm used to being, you feel me, at the bottom. This ain't never been really good. So now that it's good, people don't understand that you can, sometimes the scars don't show, you feel me? You can go through all that shit, but the scars don't always show. It's really, it's all about perspective though. Honestly, when I put my life in perspective against a third world person, you feel me, they're going through it way worse, you feel me? I might got it bad in America, but. 
on a scale of good and bad, they got it worse than me, so I can't never complain. I feel like you just gotta put yourself in another person's shoes, and at the same time, my mother was a first time mother, you feel me? So I gotta understand that she was growing as well as I was growing, so I can't never, ever, you know, say nothing bad about what she did. And to this day, I bought a house last year on Halloween. I cashed out on it, Black, uh, not even Black Friday, uh, Friday the 13th of October. My mama been living free, eating free ever since then. My mama don't gotta pay no bills. You feel my mama is blessed for the rest of her life. She already retired off my face. Off my face. She don't she don't have to do nothing for the rest of her life. You feel me? And she know that. She know that my brothers and my sisters, they they coming too. They don't gotta work. Cause if I got you on my back, you straight. I'm telling you. I'm opening up businesses so that everybody can eat. It's not just about me. It never been just about me, bro. It never will be. Feel me? It's always the bigger picture. Once you make it about yourself, you get lost. You feel me? The thing is, it's never been about me. It's always been about bettering my situation. And bettering my situation, better the situation for everybody around me. That's the kind of person I am. You feel me? A healthy environment, you know, got a healthy outcome. So I feel like that's where I'm going to start taking lead. You feel me? I got three brothers and sisters older than me. Mama and my daddy, they all older than me. But I took the lead and they all followed. And we all been better ever since. You feel me? So... I'm kind of grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful that my mama ain't had no restrictions on me, you feel me? I'm, I'm glad I wasn't raised, like, you feel me, with so much pressure on me. Because that pressure could have, you know, pressed me into being somebody else. And I feel like her letting me form myself made me such a great person. In my opinion, you feel me? Because like I tell you, it's all about perspective. I could be great for one person, horrible for another person. And I'm fine with that, you feel me? So. All right. So, you know, you having that mindset is phenomenal because... You're saying, you know, you're putting on your people's, you know, your brothers, your sisters, you know, you're helping your mom out and stuff like that. I know I actually you know what made you get that mindset to change, you know, the type of person that you was before, you know, mm -hmm. you having an entrepreneurship. Now, when it comes to keeping that like mindset, because I'm pretty sure it's ups and downs. People really never see the downs. Everybody sees, you know, OK, he's doing good. OK, he got his business. OK, he's doing good in his music. What makes you keep that? you know drive every day because i know everybody has downs how do you uh, keep i think wanting more it's my want for more honestly like i can't say nothing truly motivates me to like honestly go up and do something because honestly and the light i'm in right now i feel like i'm satisfied even though you're supposed to never satisfy like i retired my mom i own a business and i own my house like that's something that i never would have expected not especially by my age so i'm to a point to where i'm more like my my want for more is my motivation at this point. Like it ain't, I don't I don't really have to do nothing no more. I'm, I'm at a point where like, if I truly wanted to, I can have all my brothers and sisters and my mom living with me for free off my face if I decided that. But you know, I I'd rather them become stronger individually so we can all come together collectively and become stronger. So it's all about, it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time, and I don't know. It's perspective. I feel like it's all about perspective. Like. Like I tell you, I used to wear hand-me-downs, but think about the people that didn't have no clothes. Like, it's worse for them. I knew people that used to wear the same clothes, I mean, like, three, four days a week. I was lucky that I had a pair, you feel me, for each day, and then had to switch it up the next week. Some people ain't had that luxury, so. Well, it ain't no luxury, but some people ain't had that option, so. Yeah. Yeah, if you had a goal for this neighborhood, if you could change something in the next 10, five years, what would it be? Um... Like, it could be, like you said, you know, we don't got a lot of programs here. It could be more houses. I like the tutor, man. Like, I became, I don't know. I feel like kids need that individual attention. Not like one person, but like everybody needs somebody to sit down and individually explain something to them because we all got different questions. We all got different understandings. It's never the same for anybody. So I feel like one teacher teaching 30 kids, it worked for certain individuals, but some individuals need to actually be sat down and talked to and bring it to their understanding. So if we can get the young ones to become bright early, man, they can fix this. Like not saying that I want to give it to them to fix, but they gonna develop, they develop, their minds develop differently. They can fix problems that we are overlooked. You feel me? It's all about, I feel like starting at the bottom, like starting with the young ones, you feel me? They gotta finish or at least continue. So I don't know, I feel like we gotta, celebrate them more i feel like a lot of times kids from like the area that i grew up 
you get punished for getting in trouble, but you don't get celebrated for doing good. So it's kind of like, you know, you don't want to do good as much because you don't get celebrated. It's like, damn, like, I got straight A's for five years in a row and I couldn't even get a high five, but you feel me? The moment that I turn my head the wrong way, I'm getting punished. So I feel like it's, that, again, that's perspective. You got to do things differently. How you guys doing out there? My name is Ruben Wooten. I'm the owner of Harvest Market, which is a meat market produce and deli right here in the heart of Titusville. I also own the Heroes Grill, which is a military tribute restaurant, uh, you know, tributing military, fire and police. Uh, we're right here in the heart of the African-American community, serving up delicious burgers, chicken wings, cheese, steaks, ribs, collard greens. You know, we're doing it real right here in Titusville. We just want to welcome each and every one of you out to what we're doing here. We've been around since 2015, just opened up the meat market in 2020, and uh, everything is going fantastic. So for those of you who would love a fantastic lunch, a fantastic dinner, as well as cook yourself a fantastic steak or grilled chicken or what have you, come and see us at the Heroes Grill, the Harvest Market. We'll see you there. If I can ask, you know, what, what got you starting a business? Uh, what got me started in entrepreneuring is I wanted to be in control of my own money. I wanted to be in control of my own destiny. I wanted to be in control of my own product. So I was working as an electrical engineer and a maintenance facilities director at the uh, Florida Institute of Technology, FIT, the university right there in Melbourne. Um, things were going well. I loved the place, but I never could have my own, live my own dreams, you know. So I decided to take my dreams out of somebody else's hands and put them in my own hand, control my own destiny, and here I am, loving every minute of it. If you can get advice to the youth right now that want to start their own business or thinking about, you know, opening up their own restaurant, what uh, advice would you give them? Uh, the first advice I would give you is master your, your basic education skills. You know, master uh, at least high school. You know, understand the power of math, understand the versatility of English, understand the complexities of science, understand all of those things because those things you, like I was, when I was young, I used to always say, you know, when I get older, I'll never need these skills. That is a complete lie. You will need every one of those skills you are taught. Enhance who you are, advance your education, get to know people, come out into your community, figure out what your community needs, provide that need, collect your resources. And if somebody wanted to come to the restaurant, what should they try out? Uh, number one thing we sell here is burgers. We grind our own burgers right in our meat market. Everybody comes and buy a burger. Burgers are six, seven dollars, uh, super affordable. Also, our wings uh, are delicious. We sell a lot of wings, uh, also provided by our meat market and all of our other uh, poultry distributors. And uh, you come to the you come to the Heroes or Harvest Market, you're gonna have a great time. Check out our Google page at the Heroes Grill Facebook page at the Harvest Market and uh, you'll, you'll let our customers speak for yourselves. What does the city of Titusville mean to you? city of Titusville means everything. It's my beginning. It's my birthplace. It's where I was born. It's where I was raised. It's the people who love me first. It's the people who embraced me first. It's the people where, you know, that came around me and told me that I could be something. Well, now I am that something. And those same people are coming back supporting my dream. Titusville means everything to me. I've served uh, the military had an opportunity to try in five, uh, five different continents you know, throughout this world. Could choose to live anywhere I want to. I want to be in Titusville. Yo, y'all know what it is. It's locked in with Kodak Blow Up. Y'all know what time it is, man. My Just Smoke, episode one, locked in. More coming soon. Stay tuned.